So this guy, his name's Nicholas, and Nicholas has a big problem. He's dead. One day, he just dies rather suddenly. So how does he die? Well, before all this, Nicholas was going to college in Ohio. And there, one night, he decides to essay a woman. And he's arrested, and here's his mugshot. Then he moves to Utah, and later that same year, he allegedly essays another woman. Then, shortly after, a third woman. Here's his mugshot. Then he moves again to Rhode Island. And there, four women file complaints against him, and one of those women gets a restraining order. Here's his mugshot. So Nicholas has a terrible record with women and he's been arrested a lot, but he never does any serious prison time for any of this, and it seems like he's never going to. Until. Investigators back in Utah, they start testing old backlogged grape kits from years ago. And in one of those kits, guess whose DNA gets a match? Nicholas. So now investigators in Utah are looking for him, but he's moved many states away. So they place him on Utah's most wanted list. And allegedly he gets word of this and he moves again. This time he moves overseas to the UK and he eventually ends up living in Bristol. And after a couple of years, he meets a nice woman. He marries her. We'll just call her wife. Now, allegedly, he doesn't tell wife about his arrest history, so no one in the UK knows who he is or anything about his past. <laughs> Until... At some point, Nicholas decides to open a ton of credit cards in one of his relative's names. 22 credit cards to be exact. That relative eventually finds out and reports him to the FBI. So now the FBI is involved and they're looking for him for wire fraud and they try contacting him. So now Nicholas knows the FBI is after him and he gets nervous. And that is when he gets his best idea yet. He'll just die or at least he'll pretend to be dead. I mean, they can't convict him if he's dead. So he pretends to be his own grieving widow and he contacts local news stations back in Rhode Island. And he tells them Nicholas got cancer and died and he asks them to cover the story. Then he writes and publishes his own obituary, basically saying that Nicholas has succumbed to his illness and that his ashes were scattered at sea. And to his credit, this idea kind of works. A lot of people who knew him back in the States, they're all sad and some local news outlets end up covering the story of his death. And around this time, he and his wife decide to move again, this time to Glasgow for another fresh start. And once again, he's safe and all in the clear. One day, out of nowhere, Nicholas gets COVID. And he gets it really bad. He gets it so bad, in fact, that he has to go to the hospital. So he checks into the hospital. Now, he can't check in under his name Nicholas because Nicholas is dead. So he gives them a different name. Arthur Knight. And by this time, the FBI is done with his games. They have zeroed in on him. So they figure out where his apartment is in Glasgow. And Scottish police show up and his wife is there. And his wife is like, he's not here. He's in the hospital with COVID. So they go to the hospital and they immediately arrest him. Now, when he gets arrested, he's basically like, but I'm not Nicholas. My name is Arthur Knight. I've never even been to the United States. I'm Irish. And the whole time, he's putting on like this fake English accent. And police are like, yeah, that's bullshit. We have your medical records. Plus, you have like all the same tattoos. You're Nicholas. So they throw him in jail while he waits to be extradited back to the US. And the whole time, he's still like, but I'm not Nicholas. He also starts pretending to be very sick. Like he suddenly starts claiming that he can't walk and he needs a wheelchair and like an oxygen mask. Now, if you think his story is insane, so does everyone else. Because it starts to blow up and news outlets start reporting on it. And he eventually gets invited onto Dateline to give an interview. And in this interview, he is still committed to the bit. I'm not Nicholas. I do not know how to make this clear. No, no, no. I mean, he is really committed to the bit. People say that's not. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. <laughs> Exactly. Even when he goes to trial to see if he should be extradited back to the U.S., he still claims he is not Nicholas. But at this point, they got DNA evidence, they got fingerprints, medical records, his tattoos. So the judge is just not buying his nonsense. So finally, they extradite him back to Utah, and there he's in jail waiting for his trial. And in jail, of course, he's still keeping up the act. Objection, my lady. That is complete hearsay. Shout out to every state and country he fled to. 